Well, so at that point, everyone was out of money. And I said, y y you got to be classy to be on Broadway. Well, no, we were going to a show, but I guess nobody had the money to go see a Broadway show. It's not the point at which Broadway show. Wait, you don't think I go to Broadway? You don't think I'm like fancy, classy enough for Broadway? I, let me tell you something. I can go to a Broadway show. You, you have no idea the types of shows I've been to. So don't, don't even, let's not even go there. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And by request, today I'm going to uh, show everyone how we're going to do some more complex app packaging with Intune for Windows. Um, I know we did a packaging video early on. I'll be honest, I forgot about it. Apparently, I said I would do some follow-up, and thankfully, people watch this stuff now. So you asked, and here we are. We're going to do a follow-up to app packaging, and I've already said app packaging. What else am I supposed to say? Yeah, I know. Like I, I look like I only go to rock concerts, but, you know, I don't. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Oh, okay, so in terms of app packaging and, and looking at some more advanced things, I wanna look at two scenarios today. So the first is I wanna take a look at packaging an executable file uh, as opposed to packaging an MSI with the content prep tool. You know, when we go to our applications and we're looking at um, something that's MSI based, for example, like let's look at, uh, and I'll just pick Cisco Jabber, cause why not? Um, if something is an MSI, it's gonna, the, the Win32 content prep tool is gonna be able to look at that MSI and essentially pull a lot of this out for you. The install commands, the uninstall commands, and the detection rule, cause it could just look at the MSI code. The problem is when you package an EXE, none of that comes over, so you gotta do it yourself. So I'll show you a few tips we can use to, try to make it as smooth. And I figured uh, this was the only thing I could think of in terms of executables. So VS Studio Code. So as always, the first thing, the very first thing you wanna do when you're doing any kind of app packaging is you wanna open up a Windows sandbox. And the reason you wanna do that is to have a clean space to work without messing up your machine. So now that I have the sandbox here, I can take VS Code and I can copy that and put it here on the desktop. And there we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my command prompt and I'm gonna navigate over there. So this would be desktop VS code. So if you're not sure what the silent install switch is, of course you can always Google something and there's you know, tons of information on the web about best silent install switch to use and things like that. But you know, there's a built-in way to see what it is. So if I call this, the setup file, the exe, and do dash help, a lot of exes uh, give all this to you. So you can see here, I got clear instructions and I have, uh, let's see, silent, very silent, instruct setup to be silent or very silent, suppress MSG box, instruct setup to suppress the message boxes. So you have a lot of different options here when it comes to um, EXE. You could say instruct setup to restart applications. You could do no restart applications. So whatever it is that you want from an experience standpoint to have this application work, you can totally do that. Uh, so I really just want the very silent switch in mind. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to run that. And I'm gonna do very silent. So we can close the setup folder and I'm gonna wait a few minutes and, and Visual Studio Code should just install because I chose very silent. Obviously I'm not gonna see anything, but you know, just give it a few minutes. All right, so it's all set up and installed. So I know that that's my install line. Okay, so while you're going through this whole process, I definitely recommend taking notes. So we know now what our install line is gonna be. And that install line is gonna be the setup file. So I'll just type it out. Uh, I should probably actually be able to copy and paste through here. Let's see. Let's try it. Yeah, okay, so that's my, that's my install line. Now what's my uninstall line, right? So it might be in help and you can check there, but I want to show you different ways to do things, right? Options are good. So if you open up the registry and go to HK Local Machine, Software, Microsoft, 
I shouldn't be scrolling. I should have just hit W, but what are you going to do? Windows current version. So current version has a key called uninstall. And if you drop this down, you might have to look through a few things, uh, but you'll eventually find it. Take a look at this visual studio code. And there is an uninstall string here. Look at that. So you can get this right from the registry. So you get it for all different types of programs here. So whatever it is you have, you can find the uninstall string. If for some reason you don't see it here, you may end up wanting to look in the, where is it here? Software, the WoW 6432 node. If for some reason it's not there, it would be the same path. It would be Microsoft, Windows, current version, uninstall, and you should be able to find what you're looking for there. But we don't need that. So we're just gonna go back to here. Oh, I wanted to get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to copy that quiet uninstall string. And I'm going to put that in my handy dandy notepad. That's a nostalgic throwback. All right, so I have my install, my uninstall. Now, what about my detection rule? So typically what I like to do is use file paths for everything. Um, you could use the registry, but right here I could see C program files, Microsoft, VS Code. So let's go ahead and look into that. C program files, Microsoft VS Code, VS Code, EXE, and you can shift right click and copy as path. And that is going to be your detection rule. So, you know, there we go. Let's do, so let's put one of these together now that we, and we could just scrap this box because we did what we need to do. That's what's so great about sandbox. Okay, so I'm going to add my content prep tool and we're going to run that as an administrator. Source folder is this folder. The setup file, you can just copy the name of it so you don't have to type it. And now I have my Intune Win that's going to be packaged. We're going to open Intune back up. We're going to go to Windows Apps, Add. This you should know how to do. We've done this so many times together. I think I sound like Bob Ross there. Select the package file. Obviously desktop, uh, VS code. There we go. Now the other problem with EXEs instead of MSIs is because it couldn't extract the install and uninstall commands, it doesn't know the name either. Sometimes it's nice it has the name. Obviously you can uh, do your own Visual Studio Code. I've showed this one a while ago. I like to bounce over to Chocolatey. And kind of get descriptions from them. Uh, where are the packages? Packages. There we go. So I would just search for Visual Studio Code. And there you go. I like to take their little descriptions. Nothing wrong with that. Here you go. You can really get crazy if you want to. So you can just take something simple. Oh, and we'll throw that in there. Edit description. That's, that's good enough. It supports Markdown, so feel free to go nuts. That's by Microsoft. And the version is 192.2. Okay. Um, logo, we could probably pull the logo from Chocolatey as well. Save image as, VS Code. You get your image and the description right from there. I should write something that automates that. That would be pretty cool. Uh, there we go. Perfect. Now, all I have to do is paste in my info from the, uh, I almost deleted that. Okay. There we go. Let's get set up very silent. Cool. We're going to take our uninstall. Also very cool. System is fine. We're going to go through up oh, architecture. 32 bit shouldn't even be in here anymore. Detection rules. We're going to manually configure. So I already know I'm going to do file path. So I'm just going to copy that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of I'm going to get rid of code exe here and put it down here. 
So that's the path, that's the final. And if it exists, we are good to go. If I wanted to, I can do the version is uh, greater than or equal to 192.2. So whatever it is, you're good to go. And you would just create and assign that. I'm not gonna go through that, but that's how we would do it. All right, so we're gonna stop there for now. Went through quite a bit in terms of getting those executables ready, finding the uninstall string, testing in the sandbox, getting our parameters. So hopefully that helps if you're, you know, packaging executables, especially if it's like uh, more in-house stuff and uh, there's really no easy button for it. Uh, next time we're gonna get into having more complex installers, or I would say multiple installers in one package and using some kind of script uh, to kickstart or orchestrate them all um, to install. So we'll be seeing you.